Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining me for this next video. Today, we're gonna to do something that is totally different than anything that I've done before here on the channel. Today, we're gonna to make a spoon rest. Now, I know that sounds a little different, but um, we're not gonna be turning anything on the lathe. We're gonna be taking this beautiful piece of black walnut, as you can see here, and I've went ahead and planed both sides and put in a little bit of CA glue. I'm gonna do another light planing on both sides to get it nice and clean. And then we're gonna be cutting pieces out of this to make this spoon rest. And we're gonna be doing some carving today. So this is gonna be an interesting little piece. Um, I think we're gonna do a bunch of these. In fact, this is one of the projects that I want to include in the stuff that I sell at craft shows. Now, I'm not saying that this has to be something that you make just for craft shows. This could be something you give away to your family, your friends, Christmas gifts, whatever. But it's a simple little project, and I think you'll find it's really easy to make, and they look fantastic. So stick around. We're going to jump into this little project right now. Well, before we go on to the next step, I want to show you a couple of things. Um, number one, I have my miter gauge backwards on my table saw. And instead of making a full fledged sled, if you would, um, or if you will, uh, I ended up just using this sacrificial fence and, you know, obviously uh, putting some black tape to have a zero degree, um, you know, plate for my blade. And basically what this does is when I'm cutting something very thin, it doesn't allow that material to go down in between the blade and the actual plate itself. And then with this, one of the great things is when you're squaring up a piece of wood is you can actually come in here and place one end on, you know, on your blade and pull this off. If this piece of wood is not square, it's going to square it up based on that measurement. Um, when you initially, you know, place the piece of wood up against, you know, um, the blade and it works really well. So one of the things I like to do before I do anything is plane and joint and square up my wood, uh, so that I'm working with a good piece of, of material, you know, when I start. So we're going to jump into the next step and that's measuring out what we're going to actually cut. Okay. So. You know, you've seen my shop and you know that I do not have a dedicated workbench that I can do, you know, just general work on uh, that's out here in the floor because I do use my garage as a garage. But um, I do have these folding tables and a piece of MDF that I just put on here, well, press board, um, just as a surface and it works fine. So what we're going to do right now is just measure out the size that we're going to actually make these. Now, the typical size of this is squared at four and a half inches. So I'm going to go a little bit longer than four and a half inches. I'm going to go to about four and five eighths. Okay. Four and five eighths. And then I'm just going to put a line on that. Pretty straightforward, guys. You know, uh, this is simple to do. So this is our length of the spoon um, holder. Now, 
that's four and a half inches from here to here. Now we want to go another four and a half inches in from the side. So we'll come in, let's do it this way, make it a little simpler, four and a half inches. We're going to go four and five eighths. Right there, that'll be good. Because we're gonna have a little bit of room uh, to play with here. And so this will be cut out, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and cut this piece and then we'll take this over to the bandsaw and we'll cut out our shape. Okay, so I made this little template and this template is what we're going to use to be able to cut this out on the bandsaw. So I'm going to come over here on this side and um, just basically line this up where I want it and put me, you know, a line in here. And remember, we made this a little bit bigger than necessary so that we have uh, some compensation for our cuts and our sanding. Then we just come over on the other side and do the exact same thing and get it lined up where we want it. And of course you can see there we've got it basically um, where we want it to be. Now once I get this cut out on the bandsaw, we'll take it over here to our uh, spindle sander and get this nice and cleaned up. All right, so we'll take this over here to our spindle sander and we'll go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. If you don't have one of these, you need to get one. If you've got a spindle sander, it'll help clean up your, uh, you know, your sandpaper. And just put this on here and just kind of go around it and get it nice and smooth. Okay, so the very next thing that I want to do on this piece is to draw the area that I want to hone out or carve out for my spoon. And so I'm just going to do this by hand. You know, you could do this a number of different ways, but I'm just going to do it like this and keep it really, really simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the curve of this piece. and just come straight down. And I'm coming off of this edge probably about an inch and a half, maybe three quarters, or I said inch and a half, about three quarters of an inch uh, to an inch roughly. And then just come straight across the top here. And now keep in mind, this is gonna be rough at first, but then once you get um, this honed out, what'll happen is you'll come back in with your, you know, orbital sander and you'll, you know, sand this and there'll be a little bit of hand sanding too. Um, now you could do this with a router. I'm just going to do it with a orbital sander and I'll show you that here in just a minute. But this just kind of gives you an idea. Now the threshold that I want down here on the bottom where the spoon actually sits into the piece is actually going to be about right here. Okay, so I'm going to use that mark and I'll hollow this out. Now, whenever I round this, I'll round it from the lowest point up to this point here and round it over. Um, yeah, so that's basically how you do it. Now, these corners will be round. These, might, these lines might be a little closer to the edge. But then once we get that done, then we can come in and finish our outside. Now, I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach this so that I can do this, you know, this uh, carving work. All right, so to get started, uh, before we actually do our carving, what we want to do is get this situated so that we can do our carving. And what I like to do is take the piece on the back side, wherever, um, you know, whatever side that I'm going to use, and put some green, non-stick, if you will, tape 
on this. This is called Frog Tape, and then I like all other videos. I will put the, the links to the description or in the description of all of the different things that I'm using. And now you can see we've got this on there. Now, the next thing that I want to do is take some green tape and literally tape it directly to my surface. Now, keep in mind, this is non-stick tape, so this is going to come up really easy when we get finished. Make sure it fits your piece where it's big enough where you can fit your piece. I want to go a little bit larger than that. Now there's a lot, again, a lot of different ways you could do this, but this is just the way that I'm doing it. Now the next thing you want to do is take a little CA glue and you want to put it on the back of your piece. So just take some CA glue, just run it on there like so, all right? And then spray your activator onto the green tape. Okay, then we take our piece and set it right on there, just like so. And what's gonna happen is in just a few seconds, this is gonna be hard as a rock and finished and ready for us to be able to do our carving. And this just mounts it to the surface. Now when we get done, this will pop off really easy and our tape will come off of our board uh, very easily also. So let's get into the carving. Okay, so the very first thing that I'm gonna be using is um, this Proaxon, that's with how you pronounce it, Proaxon um, grinder. And that's what we're gonna do to, uh, to hone out the majority of what we're gonna hone out. Then I'll be able to switch over to either a, 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 you know, a, a finishing uh, head or grinder or some type of a sander. So I can use a number, I've got a couple of different things here that I can use depending on how difficult or how easy it is, you know, for me to, to hone this out. Now, the, the thing I wanna say right up front is make sure when you do this that you have eyeglasses on, I have a face mask on, and, um, you know, make sure that, you know, you're protected because this thing um, can get a little crazy and throw a lot of stuff, so you'll see here in just a second. But I'm gonna turn this on, and I've got it turned up quite fast. It's probably, what's well, completely as high as it'll go. And we're just gonna come right in here and start grinding this out. Now one of the keys to doing this is making sure you're going with the grain. Our grain is running across. So we just wanna make sure we're running with the grain. So now what I'm gonna do is take my regular sander like I sand my bowls with, and I'm gonna go through the grits um, just like as if we were doing a bowl. So I'm gonna go 120, 180, 240, and 400. Okay, so another way to soften this, and we're gonna take this over to the spindle uh, grinder here in a minute, and we'll, you know, we'll clean this up. But you can take a sanding block and go around that. I just wanted to show you a couple of options here because there's different ways um, that you can do this. But what you just wanna do is just knock that edge off of that just so it's not sharp. Now, we wanna be able to remove this from this uh, board. So we just simply come over here and grab our paper, get our paper up here, and you can see it just pulls right off. And then what will happen is this is glued to this. So you just take the tape that's on your piece and remove that, and you can see it comes right off. We got a little piece stuck there, but we can sand that off. But there's our piece right there, and it's nice and smooth, and it's um, getting ready. Once I get this nice and sanded here and get these edges rounded over, we'll be ready for some finish. So stick around, and we'll finish this little piece up very shortly. 
So I use my little orbital sander here with some, uh, you know, 220 on it and just basically got this nice and smoothed out really, really, really nice. Now I'm going to take a little steel wool and just lightly go over this. Now, something else I want to do with this that's very, very important. Uh, before I put any kind of sanding sealer on this or finish of any kind, um, I want to do a couple of things. And the first thing is, is I want to go over here to the drill press and I want to put my coin in or cut the hole for my coin. And then after I do that, I am going to take a little bit of water from my water bottle and spritz this to raise the grain. Now, keep in mind, you know, when somebody's using this, they're going to be using this, you know, right there at their stove or on their counter where things are wet that go on this. If we don't raise this grain before we put our finish on, it's going to raise whenever someone uses it, and we don't want that. So we go ahead and, you know, get that grain raised up by spritzing it with a little bit of water. This looks really good. It's nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do these other things that need to be done, and then we'll um, start putting some finish on. All right, so the next thing that we want to do is take our piece. Um, now that we've got the coin in and everything's ready, we're just going to take this piece and actually put it in mineral oil. Now, just like doing a cutting board or something of that nature, using mini mineral oil as a finish um, you know, protects the wood, especially when it's going to be in a wet environment. And of course, uh, it makes it very beautiful. And we're just going to coat it up really good. Okay, so over here at the finish area, we're just going to set it on these little plastic uh, triangles. You've probably seen those before. And that just gives a very fine point so that it doesn't affect, you know, the actual surface of the piece. And just let it sit there just like that. And let this mineral oil soak down into that wood as much as it's going to. And what will happen is uh, as it starts to dry, some of this mineral oil, once it soaks in, will kind of pool on the top. So in about an hour, we'll come back out and dab off any of that finish. And then we'll end up putting some wood wax uh, it's called walrus oil wood wax um, and it's designed for cutting boards we'll put that on this piece as a finish and then this piece will be completely finished now obviously you could make a number of these in a day with no problem and uh, and have them ready for you know gifts or to take to a show with you so let's let this dry down we'll get our finish on there our wood wax and we'll take a look at the finished piece well, this little spoon holder came out really, really nice. Let me bring it up and just kind of show you. Uh, this is just a little chunk of walnut, and that's the front of it. And then there's our coin in the back, and then, of course, our transitions and, you know, our shape that we actually ended up making, you know, came out really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. I think it came out great. Um, these things are super simple to make, as you saw. It just takes a few minutes. I mean, I'm talking within... 30 to 45 minutes you can have one of these completely finished and of course they sell really good at a craft show people love these things in their kitchen so if you've got scrap wood laying around the shop um, this might be something that you want to you know you want to make and give as a gift you know at christmas or birthdays or whatever but uh, yeah really fun simple little project go down in the comments leave me some feedback on this project i'd really appreciate it and uh, let me know hey have you ever made these things before um, these things are a lot of fun. So if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to have a lot of fun here in the shop and I look forward to all the projects we're going to do in the future. So with that said, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.